Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. It's time for our weekly segment with John Machoda of The Athletic. Just a sneak for Prescott, and he's in. Touchdown. Brought to you by Pioneer Steel and Pipe, where customer service is their main focus and best in metal, steel, and pipe for large or small projects with two locations in Waco and Bryan. Family owned and operated since 1943. We're here, John Machota, theathletic.com, covers the Cowboys. They open their preseason schedule tomorrow night against the Steelers, the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio. John, thank you. Are you uh, are you in Oxnard on your way to Ohio? Are you going to Ohio? I'm not going to be making that trip. Uh, I, me, much like Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper and Demarcus Lawrence, are not making that trip. Uh, but I know there are a few writers that are, but no, I'm actually going back to Dallas. Uh, I'm at the airport right now, and then uh, I'm going back to Michigan for a wedding uh, over the weekend. So that's my plan. Good for you. Now, do you feel like th- that you're going to learn anything from anybody watching if you do a chance to watch that game, which is going to have so many players missing? Yeah, I think the number one person to watch will be Ben DiNucci, just to see he didn't get any preseason time last year. And, I mean, as of right now, he's their number three quarterback. And if he shows enough in these preseason games, which I would anticipate he probably plays the most of any player on the roster in the preseason, then that justifies keeping a third quarterback on the roster. If he doesn't look very good in these games, uh, I just don't see how you can keep a third quarterback with just all the other places where uh, I just, as of right now, without any injuries, you know, defensive back, uh, you know, even at receiver, offensive line, defensive line, where you'd rather go heavy there and, and, and keep an extra player there. So, you know, of course, you know, Micah Parsons and, and some of this rookie class. But I think as we get into uh, second quarter and that second half, especially, you're just going to see a lot of Ben DiNucci. And uh, I'm interested to see how, how he holds up there. John, do you think that uh, the way that Ben DiNucci and Garrett Gilbert perform early in these first couple of games will dictate how the Cowboys react to backup quarterback uh, off the roster? Or do you think that it will take longer than that? I think it. I mean, they're they're obviously a factor in it because they're on the roster right now. But I think it's it's bigger than them. I think it comes down to what becomes available from other teams. If if they see somebody out there that gets cut from another team when the rosters are trimmed down, then they're gonna they're gonna investigate that and and they're gonna you know be interested in, in that possibility. Whereas that wasn't going to be something last year with Andy Dalton. You know, when they had Dalton, they were set there. They weren't going to continue to look at backup quarterback, but where they are right now, absolutely. If there's a if there's a player that gets released by another team and it makes sense for them, then I think that player is in play whether they're comfortable with Garrett Gilbert and Ben DiNucci or Cooper Rush or not. So, um, I mean, I will say Garrett Gilbert has been solid in, in training camp, getting these extra you know snaps with with Dak. Obviously, not working with the ones the last few practices. So, um, you know, it's it, it's not the worst thing in the world if they go into the season with him as their backup quarterback. It just I, I don't think he's in the same classes you know, Andy Dalton or, you know, even further back when they had Tal Orton. David, how good has C.D. Lamb looked to the point to where I see people growing concerned over Trayvon Diggs, even though Diggs has apparently had a pretty good camp, but obviously uh, C.D. Lamb has had a heck of a camp as well. Yeah, I I think Trayvon Diggs has played very well in, in everything I've seen from camp. But, yeah, he's getting put on an island a lot, you know, in these practices and they're not tackling to the ground and, and, and doing things that, you know, DBs are going to be able to do in, in regular NFL games. And so, and then he's going against CD Lamb, who's a freak show. And, and as you guys have probably seen from some of the videos that are out there, I mean, it's every practice. He, he hasn't had a bad practice in every single practice. There's some type of catch that you're just like, man, that thing, that thing, that's another highlight that might even be better than the last one. So he's fitting into, um, kind of wearing that 88 like we saw in Oxnard with, with Des Bryant and how many times he would make these big time catches. I would say the, the biggest one that kind of stands out about him in these in these practices is just his ability to high point the football because, you know, we've seen him do a lot last year, but it was mostly working in the slot. Well, that's, that's, that was because there was no training camp and no regular offseason. Uh, you know, that's not going on this year. This year, they're moving him all over the place. And so there's going to be opportunities for him to make plays in the red zone like that on jump balls, on back shoulder fades like they did with Des while he also can still line up in the slot and they can move him around. So, 
you know, as long as CD land stays healthy, uh, I think he's just going to have a monster year. And, and there's nothing that we've seen so far that would make me think otherwise. Is he their best wide receiver? I know Amari Cooper's got a great resume. He sometimes is also on the sideline. Um, is is seed is are there some within the organization who might think he's better than Amari Cooper? As of today, yeah, I mean, I guess there's o- there always could be somebody that thinks that, but I would say as of today, they still they still lean Amari Cooper. Um, but the potential is there for CD Lamb to just be uh, to exceed that, and and you know, obviously, be one of the best, one of the top five receivers in the league in the very very near future. So. Um, as of right now, I, I still think Amari Cooper is their number one. He still would probably be my odds-on favorite to lead them in uh, receptions and receiving yards. But but CD is coming on fast, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he leads them in those in those categories. Not to mention touchdowns. And then the other part of it too is that you know they're not shying away from using him as their primary punt returner. So there's plays to be made there as well. So uh, for nothing else, uh, no, regardless of how the season goes, it should be exciting to watch 88. Malik Hooker, how's he looked so far? Malik Hooker is in a similar situation as Amari and, and Demarcus Lawrence, and really even uh, Dak as of late, where it's, it's a lot of working off to the side, mm-hmm. just because he had that Achilles injury last October, and they're just trying to bring him along slowly. Because you know, let's be honest, it's not just an Achilles with him. He's had several different injuries over the last four or five years that it, it just seems like it, if it isn't one thing, it's something else, and so. They're being really cautious with Malik Hooker, so we have not seen him. He has not actually practiced in, in any individual or team drills. Uh, he's, he's been doing conditioning stuff and still recovering uh, from that Achilles off to the side. So, you know, if he's healthy, when they have to cut the roster down later this month to 53, I think he makes the 53 just because of his upside. Um, but if they don't think he's healthy yet, then, then that's, a, that's a totally different story. But, yeah, I mean, if, if you have a healthy Malik Hooker, I mean, that's why he was a you know top 15 pick in the draft, and the Colts probably wouldn't have let him go but it just he hasn't been able to stay healthy so if, if they like where he's at when they get back to Dallas and, and maybe work him into practice there you know I still think the talent's there for him to be uh you know one of their better playmakers in the back end but he obviously has to get healthy first thank you very much John enjoy your I guess break even though you're traveling good luck <laughs> on your flight and enjoy the wedding in Michigan Michigan thanks for your time <laughs> No problem, guys. Thank you, John Machota, theathletic.com, covers the Cowboys. They play the Steelers tomorrow night. I don't even know if I'll know what's on tomorrow night if I accidentally see Twitter going at it, and uh, even then I may not turn it on. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to have a big breakdown from uh, the Cowboys game against the Steelers, Paul. That is that is all you if you, if you so will. choose. But, it, uh, it, it will look, I watch preseason games for the Cowboys because I do a Cowboys podcast. So that's why I watch them. I don't enjoy them. I mean, I know, like, I know people and colleagues in this business who the preseason starts and they want to see the guys who are going to be in the CFL. Yeah, I mean, like, that's no what no chance to. to make yeah, I mean, like, yeah. that's that's what, like, you know, I, sometimes I'm watching the game, going, "Man, this guy's gonna kick ass in three down football. He were just gonna be great, but he's not gonna make the NFL." And um, and most of the times, I kind of tune out after the first half or so because there's certain things I want to see, like for the Cowboys, just getting to know them, someone who covers them. I want to see. You know, Garrett Gilbert and, and Ben DiNucci a little bit and see if, if they look – I don't I know they're not going to be good, but do they look like they know what they're doing back there? That's what I want to see. That's it. I, don't, I have no delusions of grandeur on that. All right. You have something. Didn't you have something you wanted to go 